David Moreno, what are your thoughts on the Paraguayo uh, Junior unfortunate incident? Do you think any measures could have been taken to prevent such an incident? Any stories on working with him? Well, his father, you can't, you, I can't explain to you, and if you watch it, you won't get it. You got Beatlemania. You got to understand his father. His father would move mountains. People would would go insane just at his name. So his kid came into this environment, and uh, he was a great guy. He was. We were friends. Um, he was a lot younger than me, so we all kind of, you know, he was like the baby brother to us all because his father took us in. Uh, when I saw it happen. When I, I woke up in the morning and there was like a million texts on my phone and I was like, Conan killed a guy last night in the ring and I was like, fuck, Conan punched somebody for once, probably, oh my God. So I wanted to see it. And then as I started seeing the tweets and reading it, and I, I, he died and I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? And then I saw the video and I was like, I've seen maybe eight or nine guys in my career die in the ring or in the dressing room and uh, you, you don't know how to explain it. I, I can't explain it. I mean, what, did, he, did he die when he hit the floor and he was, like, you know, when you, you cut a chicken's head off and it's a very grotesque analogy, I'm sorry. And he stood up and out of shock and nerves and whatever happened, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It's just, it doesn't matter how, how or why or, it's just the only thing that matters is, is, is somebody, a brother, a friend, uh, a brother and somebody's son is no longer with us. Could anything have been done to prevent it was his other question. Well, what if he slipped in the shower that morning? Or what if he rolled over wrong in bed and hit his head on the wall? I, I don't know. I mean, you know, you, it's a very risky business, pro wrestling, right? No matter how many times you practice to fall or how much time you've trained, or, you know, just one bad slip, and uh, that's it. You never know. Does it, could anything have been prevented? I don't know. I mean, how? How did it happen? I, I don't think so. That's okay. just... His time was up, man. Okay. And it's really hard, right? Sex and drugs is the next category. There's never too much of that. I was going to say, you have anything to say about either sex or drugs? The sure. Lone Wolf, Yo Vamp, having worked all over the U.S. and Mexico, can you compare the drug scene in the locker rooms south of the border to those across the U.S.? What drugs are more popular there? What locker room had the most drugs? Well, funny. Uh, I've seen in the, everywhere else outside of Mexico, it's usually like painkillers, um, some cocaine, not a lot. Like more, more pain pillars or downers or things like that just because it, it's so monotonous to be on the road. Um, you know, people drink a lot <laughs> um, and they just they take these pills to sleep, right? And then uh, they take all kinds of shit to wake up. Mexico, a lot of cocaine. Mm. Probably not going to make any friends, but I don't really need any friends. I'm a happy guy. A lot of cocaine. A lot, a lot of cocaine. More, uh, like, more like, so than up here. Oh, like it's not a, like, let's, let's have a few lines to get high and go in the ring and rock. No, it's like fucking Scarface. Like these guys are like this. Like it's an epidemic and, and uh, it's, it's almost embarrassing that nothing's being done about it. Do cartel guys come in and out of the wrestling business? Or oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, it's pretty notorious with... Uh, you know, money laundering and, and, and paying bribes to be able to run the show securely and not have any <laughs> problems. Oh, yeah. They kind of run the country down there, don't they, in a way? Yeah. Okay. Just a little bit. <laughs> uh, a video from The Wise Guy. Oh, boy. Yeah, you never know what you're going to get here, bro. Let's see. Uh... Vampiro. Is that the same guy? This is The Wise no. Guy here with a question for you. How is it like traveling with Raven? I heard he likes to talk a lot. He can stop to eat every 30 minutes and stuff like that. So did he really work your nerves or what? What's it like being on the road with Scotty? Fuck, I love Scotty, man. None of that happened with me. No? Huh? No, nah, man. We were totally cool. I know, you know, he's... Fuck. No, dude. He was just great. I didn't have no problems with him at all. Okay. You know, if, you, if he's traveling with all the other fucking pill heads who are just shaking all the time and paranoid, maybe he gets on your nerves, but... Uh, it's a rumor, speculation. Right. But no, I was good. Ramsey from Montreal says, in Shane Douglas's You Shoot, uh, he spoke about how wrestling promotions in America weren't initially accepting of your character gimmick and why your personality ego might have had something to do with it. Let's see what Shane said when he was here. Yeah, because I didn't have an ego. I like that. Uh, he's, uh, he's a different kind of character. And, and, and I think in wrestling, you know, we, even though he's like the latter, and I just heard that he had retired or something, but... 
he he brought something different to the game that the, the business wasn't uh, here in the states wasn't accepting of. I think they could have done some really cool things with that character. Uh, and then you see later, you know, version of a Gangrel or whatever. But Vamp had been doing that for years before that. And uh, it's funny to me on the wrestling business, somebody will say, "Well, he didn't get pushed because of his personality." Well. <laughs> Everyone's business has a personality, and most of us have large egos, and we wouldn't be in this business. But it's funny to me how it gets selectively chosen. You've got an ego, so you're an asshole, but I got an ego, and that's okay. You know, it's, uh, uh, you know, I've always uh, thought Vamp had, you know, something good to offer in wrestling. Man, we, I had my, my. I was so looking forward to working with him. We, we, when I first went to TNA, and I, uh, we had a match, and he was, I was involved with him in a match. I, I just thought he was, so, he was always so cool. We never really had the chance to become real, real good friends, but we were always, like, very cordial. I was really respectful of him. Um, I don't think it's fair to call somebody who's driven and motivated and willing to work hard somebody with an ego. Um, Somebody overcomes the obstacles, and in this business, you get held back and blocked and squashed and all that kind of stuff. To always, how, if I had an ego, why would have I been number one draw in Japan, France, Italy, England, Ireland, Puerto Rico, Guatemala, Mexico, United States, Canada? But what, do people say that about you? I've never heard that about you. I, I, I guess. Uh, I who, mean, who would he be hearing that from, saying you have an ego? Probably everybody who wanted to be cool. I don't know, man. There's just rumors out there, dude. Yeah. But it's like, fuck, man. You just, want, you just try to do your best, you know yeah. what I mean? David Moreno, what are your thoughts on the Paraguayo un, uh, Jr. unfortunate incident? Do you think any measures could have been taken to prevent such an incident? Any stories on working with him? Well, his father, you can't, you, I can't explain to you, and if you watch it, you won't get it. You got Beatlemania. You got to understand his father his father would move mountains. People would, would go insane just at his name. So his kid came into this environment and uh, he was a great guy. He was, we were friends. Um, he was a lot younger than me, so we all kind of, you know, he was like the baby brother to us all because his father took us in. Uh, when I saw it happen, when I, I woke up in the morning and there was like a million texts on my phone and I was like, Conan killed a guy last night in the ring, and I was like, fuck, Conan punched somebody for once, probably, oh my God. So I wanted to see it. And then as I started seeing the tweets and reading it, and I, I, he died, and I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? And then I saw the video, and I was like, I've seen maybe eight or nine guys in my career die in the ring or in the dressing room, and uh, you, you don't know how to explain it. I, I can't explain it. I mean, what, did, he, did he die when he hit the floor and he was, he, like, you know, when you, you cut a chicken's head off and it's a very grotesque analogy, I'm sorry. And he stood up and out of shock and nerves and whatever happened, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It's just, it doesn't matter how, how or why or, it's just the only thing that matters is, is, is somebody, a brother, a friend, uh, a brother and somebody's son is no longer with us. Pretty Could anything have been done to prevent it was his other question. Well, what if he slipped in the shower that morning? Or what if he rolled over wrong in bed and hit his head on the wall? I, I don't know. I mean, you know, you, you, it's a very risky business, pro wrestling, right? No matter how many times you practice to fall or how much time you've trained, or, you know, just one bad slip, and uh, that's it. You never know. Does it, could anything have been prevented? I don't know. I mean, how? How did it happen? I, I don't think so. That's okay. just... Time was up, man. Okay. And it's really hard, right? Sex and drugs is the next category. There's never too much of that. I was going to say, you have anything to say about either sex or drugs? The sure. Lone Wolf, Yo Vamp, having worked all over the U.S. and Mexico, can you compare the drug scene in the locker rooms south of the border to those across the U.S.? What drugs are more popular there? What locker room had the most drugs? Well, 